It's been a while, but we're back on SFO Grimhammer 2. In the Mad Count, Marius Lightdorf leads Avalon to battle against the undead hordes of Sylvania. He's known as the Mad Count for a reason. Listens to tactical advice from his warhorse, Daisy Kurt von Hellboring II, plucks demigriff feathers and struts around like a peacock, and on several occasions, he's gone to war with the forests outside Averheim. Not the creatures that live in the forest, but the forest itself. He's also a brilliant strategist, one of the bravest and most talented swordsmen in the Empire, and a close ally of Emperor Karl Franz. And he's backed up by some serious firepower in this battle of electric counts, as the Reichland steam tank and grenade launchers do what they can to stem the zombie tide. But Vlad the Dad is large and in charge, flanked by two fat bats and supercharged by the inhuman speed and vigor of an OG vampire. This is no ordinary Sylvanian invasion. Can Avalon hold the line, or will it be Blackfire Pass all over again? The Barrow Whites will do what they can to ensure the scales step towards the Vampire Count. So, as you would expect from the Electric Count of Averland, a man too insane to feel fear and too unpredictable to be outmaneuvered, Marius Lightdorf has a pretty nice toolkit. Gets big combat buffs when he gets low in health, can make himself unbreakable for a short time, and as a fencer known far and wide for his towering skill, wields the Mother's Ruin Rune Fang in one hand alongside a long dagger in the other, with a devastating single target hex quite similar to Vlad's. All the more fitting, they should seek to kill each other today. But yeah, he's a powerful duelist, meant for killing infantry and bleeding their HP over time. He's supported by a Celestial Wizard with Harmonic Convergence, Uranus Thunderbolt, and Chain Lightning, all very powerful spells in SFO. And over on the right flank, a Steam Tank, gifted to him by the Franz himself to help defend the Empire's eastern borders. Can toggle between Solid Shot, that's really good against Cav, and Explosive Shot, that's better for dealing with infantry. Four Outriders with pistols, a Zittler's Reichsguard on the right flank hidden in the woods, grenade launchers in the center to help thin out the zombie hordes before they close in for the kill, they lower leadership and missile resist with every single salvo, and more Reichsguard and demigraphs hidden in the back of the map. So, a very mobile Empire army, not a lot of infantry, just a few spearmen and flagellants, including the Tatter Souls, but this battle will be carried. One or lost, on the backs of the cavalry. Now for Vlad the Dad's army, Direwolves Vanguard deployed in the rear being sneaky, a contingent of Black Knights and various Reavers led by a White King, which deals magical and armor sundering damage in SFO, and a horde of zombies, just a massive wall of flesh with the corpse cart Necromancer in support. But the truly scary infantry threat are the Knights of Blood Keep, as fast on foot as Knights are on horse, with an eye-watering stat line, Putting them down for good is going to be very difficult. And operating out on the far side, Vlad von Karstein has brought some pets as well. Rolling deep with two Vargolfs for a potent goon squad. They can get almost 100 speed when buffed by Von Hall's Dance Macabre. They are vampires straight out of your worst nightmares. Vlad is a great duelist, and there's no cap to the regen in SFO unless you're using that sub mod, so they can heal as much as they want which can be a problem if you're left in a situation where you can't deal with all that HP and armor. So I'm in no hurry to get into melee as this game begins. I notice that I have quite a few options for thinning down this horde before they close into close quarters combat. Skeleton spearmen, zombies, all that stuff will get exploded by a steam tank with explosive shot, but more than that, by outriders with grenade launchers who are amazing for this kind of role. They have a ton of ammunition, they lower missile resist of any unit they hit, and they can thin out chaff all day long. So get a couple volleys into the front ranks and zombies are gonna disappear. And in SFO, you really wanna make sure these zombies die because I think they have like an 18,000 HP pool. They have a gigantic health pool. It's extremely good meat shield, but their one downside is they're very slow. Yes, they're super cheap. Yes, they are going to meet shield better than pretty much any other unit in the game. Just soak up damage, but they're really slow. And so what I'm noticing is, yeah, the zombie hordes are closing in for the kill. I don't need to push up at all. Let the Outriders do their work, give the steam tank the time it needs to fire, and just explode this front line. Pistoliers, handguns, grenade launchers, all that stuff together is going to make for a potent combination, and it's going to make for a lot of minced up meaty boys in the front ranks. And state troops will take absolute ages to deal with them in CQB. So any zombie unit I can kill off early is one I don't have to deal with when friendly fire starts to become more of a danger later on in the battle. You can like the walking dead out there. It's one thing about this mod. Really makes you feel like an undead horde. And the Outriders are having a field day exploding them. 
Not really what you'd want to be shooting at. You'd rather be shooting at a Grave Guard or something, but there's none of that on the field. Gotta get rid of the zombies to make it easier for the state troops when they get close up and personal. But yeah, here come the Vargulfs. They've been steroided and KO canned up by Vlad. Van Hall's Don's Macabre moving at 100 speed, more than 100 melee attack, and that means you want none of that action. There is no desire to be anywhere near them when they've got a stat line that powerful. Just shoot them in pieces. But they've got regen, and all they need to do is retreat back to the safety of the woods, and they'll be healed up pretty quickly. So I don't think we'll be able to kill them anytime soon, unless he's really overzealous with the Vargulfs, but they're already taking cover and look to be on the retreat. And Pistolaires do not have a lot of ammunition, which is different than the regular Outriders and the Outrider grenade launchers. Invocation of the Heck should get that Vargulf back up to full HP. But the grenade launchers are still firing in, and they're already at 142 kills. Gonna be even more after that volley. Mm. Daddy, that is scrumptious. Skeleton Spearman from full HP down past half in a single volley. And yeah, Outriders with grenade launchers, they're good in vanilla but they're a bit more powerful against Chaff in SFO Grimhammer 2, and that is a beautiful sight to behold. I like that quite a bit. Just important to realize this is exactly how the Vampire Counts conduct warfare, and a tactic that's even more viable in Grimhammer than the base game. Load up on Chaff and invest all your money into units that can't be sniped easily. Let them carry the day while your opponent's forced to deal with the zombie horde bearing down on them in the center. It was a sneaky direwolf ambush. They're trying to get into the Outriders and Pistoliers, but the tables got turned a bit there. Didn't catch sight of the Rice Guard until it was a little bit too late, and they're gonna take them to the Dog Pound. Rice Guard with their lances will be more than a match for the direwolves that loaded up on that left flank, and they will quickly crumble in the face of that Rice Guard charge. In the center, Demigriff Knights moving up. That's the Lance variant, not the Halberd variant. Better against infantry, more armor-piercing damage. Not gonna be needed against zombies and they could fight that all day long and not take a scratch. Heavy armor, powerful charge, but it'll still take quite a few of those to get through all that HP when you're talking about 18,000 on a zombie unit. And that's just one. There are five or six of them on the field for the vampire counts right now, while the Zintler's Reich's Guard charge in on the other side. Ouch, bit of friendly fire from the Outriders Grenade Launchers. Didn't manage to make it over the cavalry there, but the zombie horde is pushing through Flagellants and Spearmen getting ready to get stuck in while the Pistoliers continue firing in to the Vargulfs out on the left. But they're coming in now, and they're putting a lot of pressure on the Averland right flank, trying to get in and behind and shut down those Pistoliers for good. Flagellants are going to try to beat back these Blood Dragon Warriors as a huge chain lightning from that Celestial Wizard drops down. It'll kill quite a few Skeleton Spearmen, but didn't really clip anything too important there. Again, there isn't anything important on the infantry side of the field for the Vampire Counts, except for those Blood Dragon Warriors, but they won't take much damage from a Vortex. Only a few models with really high HP, they'd barely get scratched by that. They're basically monstrous infantry. Vlad getting in there, Spartan kicking, Empire Pikemen left, right, and center, and the Vargulfs will begin feasting on their flesh as well. Slam into the ground over and over, and they're gonna break that immediately as Blood Drinker drinks deep. And the battle lines have lost all cohesion. Vampire Counts will probably prefer that. They like being in big blobs around their Necromancer and around Invocation the Hex so they can heal up all their stuff. And Marius Lightdorf, the Mad Count of Averland, on his warhorse, Daisy Kurt Von Hell Boring II, pushing back the zombie tide. Steam Tank getting in there too, and they're just gonna try to stem this horde of zombies as they push through. Mother's Ruin Runefang flashing in the sun. Long Dagger carving a path, and it looks like the Demigriffs and Flagellants are coming in to support. Mad Count can kill zombies however much he wants. The issue are the Blood Dragon Warriors and the Vargulfs are still bouncing around. Now they are chasing off some Empire State Troops trying to make sure they shatter, which makes sense, but at this point I think they're getting a little bit too far away from the main engagement. They should be moving up to the central location here where all of the good stuff's happening. Pistoliers and Outriders trying to zone out those Black Knights and they're getting shot up a bit, but they have a nice missile block chance, so they're not going to take too much damage in those initial volleys. But it looks like the Blood Dragon Warriors are trying to swarm on top of the Steam Tank, and that's an interesting attack pattern for them. They've certainly got the damage to rack up quite a bit of work against that thing, 
but they're also infantry, and Steam Tank is a bit of a blender against infantry, so I'll be curious to see who wins that one. Pistoliers got a little bit of damage in on the Black Knights, who will retreat and probably get healed up to full, and the Zimmler's Rice Yard going back into the fold to try to run over the undead hordes. Grenade Launcher still firing in, still killing zombies. Ridiculous kill count for them at this point, probably well over 200, maybe even over 300 at this stage of the battle. But the Steam Tank's trying to get those blood-sucking Super Saiyans off his ass. They're moving at 66 speed. They're moving at heavy cav speed. Look at them. <laughs> those infantry are insane. Blood Dragon Warriors are no joke. And the Demigriffs are trying to line up a rear charge. Looks like they're going to have to back up and reset for that Hammer and Anvil because they didn't quite have the momentum to get in there and do all the damage they wanted to. The Blood Dragon Warriors did seem to back up and away from the Steam Tank, I guess because they were afraid the Pistoliers would start firing in, but I believe they do have the Flag of Blood Keep on foot too, so they do have that Missile Resist, and they move very quickly, so they can dodge some of those shots. They have a Shield Block Chance too, but here come the Demigriffs! Yeah, that's gonna hurt. It doesn't matter what you are, it doesn't matter if you're Black Guard and Nagarond, doesn't matter if you're the most elite tier Halberd in the game, or the crappiest Meat Shield. Zombies, Black Guard, doesn't matter. You will melt in the face of a rear charge from Demigriff Knights. And the Vargolfs have finally joined the party. Vlad the Dad in there too. All on top of the Steam Tank and trying to goon him out. Now the Steam Tank will not survive for very long with all that coming in. Uren and Thunderbolt about to rain down. Raiden casting some Arc Lightning. Dropping the global abilities and just pooping on the zombie horde. Gonna kill quite a few of them. And Marius Lightdorf still pretty much unscathed. He's only been fighting zombies this battle, which is important because if it comes down to a duel between him and Vlad, he's going to want to be full HP. But if he drops really low, he will get some really nice combat steroids to help him combat all the regen and the beguilement from Vlad von Karstein. Both of them have very good single target debuffs. Be very curious to see what happens if they do get into a duel, but the Flagellants have no chance. They are great against vampire counts because they are unbreakable, but fighting Vargolfs, they're going to do literally no damage whatsoever. They're just there to die and tar pit and be annoying. And a Chain Lightning going to hit all the Black Knights and the White King that made it all the way around the flank. Got them all tied up. Demigriff Knights, Rice Guard all charging in. And Black Knights got evaporated by that Arc Lightning. Just completely destroyed them. But it's also going to destroy Zintler's Rice Guard as well. Some friendly fire coming in from the Grenade Launchers. Pretty painful. And the Chain Lightning also melted them from about 2,500 HP down to zero. They're gone, but it was worth it. Three Black Knight units, including the various Reavers, disappeared under that Vortex. And that is why you cannot blob up in SFO, at least not with your high value stuff. The Cavalry is just straight up dead, gone. And that's a huge swing in the Empire's favor. But with that said... The Empire lost a lot of heavy cavalry in that engagement as well. The Vargolfs and Vlad are still full HP, and the state troops are facing down the horrors of Sylvania. Why won't CA release Warhammer 3? Taking out his displeasure against that poor Avalander state troop, and the Vampire Counts have completely cleared out the middle. All the infantry is dead, and all that's left for the Empire is the mobility. But as we already saw, Vargolf and Vlad... They can get up to close to 100 speed or above 100 speed with Von Hall's Dots Macabre. The Blood Dragon Warriors, I mean, this is a powerful command center that even the Heavy Cavalry will have a lot of hard time dealing with because none of its bonus for Slurge now. Zillers Rice Guard gets bonus for Slurge in SFO, but they're dead now, and all that remains are the regular Rice Guard and Demigriff Knights with Lances, which do not have bonus for Slurge and do not necessarily match up incredibly well against Vlad, a Corpse Cart, Blood Dragon Warriors and the Vargolfs. So the best way to deal with them now with their large hitbox is whittle them down with all that armor piercing fire, but the corpse cart needs to die first because it's going to be giving them that additional regen source that will keep the Vargolfs topped off, and it's a big hitbox that can't dodge any of the shots whatsoever. So the corpse cart is the big threat. The White King would be a nice one to take down too. Looks like Marius Lightdorf, the Mad Count, going after him, trying to take him down. Remember that White King does deal magical damage and armor sundering. So in a 1v1, you could be kind of a big threat. But when he's surrounded by Rice Guard, won't be able to do that well. Unfortunately, we're going to have to kind of beat feet the hell out of there. 
and escape from the White King because his buddies are coming over. That will leave the corpse cart on an island unto himself. Grenade launchers and the pistoliers can fire in and hopefully kill him quickly as more zombie summons come down. There are a handful of state troops left, but the pistoliers are running out of ammunition. They're running out of their armor piercing volleys, and that means they have to get into melee, which is really not where they shine. They shine there more than zombies do, though, and it looks like they will crumble out of existence relatively soon. So the corpse cart is isolated unto itself. And all the cavalry are going to go in and try to get a surround off. But the idea here is to strike, strike quickly, get rid of it before the Vargolfs and Vlad can come back over and bound in to melee combat. And that's where they're coming now. You don't want those Vargolfs charging into you from the rear. Terror, a lot of HP, a lot of powerful weapon damage. I believe it's over 500 with armor piercing. Yeah, I mean, all this cav is scared to deal with what remains of the vampire counts. And I don't know if they're going to get the corpse card quite in time. It's super low. Forbidden Rod is popped to try to get a little bit more mana in for Vlad von Karstein when he gets into his casting. So he hasn't done much of it this game. I think he's only cast zombie spells. But maybe a couple Invocation to Hex as well. But yeah, Steam Tank firing in. Kind of a dangerous proposition there. Could be some friendly fire coming in. We've seen friendly fire a couple times this battle. Killed Zimmer's Reich's guard and got them low earlier on. The grenade launchers fired in, so have to be a little bit more careful with that. But the corpse cart will survive on slivers of health. Will it be able to survive longer than that, though? I'm not sure if they have enough wins of magic for invocation of Nahek. Steam tank is caught out, needs to run. Corpse cart did crumble, and the cavalry will need to get in there and provide support for that steam tank as it tries to run because it will drop pretty quick when it's got two Vargolfs and Vlad munching on its butt. Well, here we go. The cavalry just going in. This is all or nothing YOLO at this point. It's either win or lose. It's, it's fight to the death. There's no point in cycle charging, really. Just get in there, get the complete surround off, and hope you can break the Fat Bat's leadership before they can kill off or tear out all of your cavalry. And this kind of thing gets so dangerous. If this, if this was Shagus, I'd maybe be a little bit more scared at this stage of the battle because Shagas have maybe a bit of a smaller hitbox. They don't get knocked down or bullied quite as easily. But Shagas also don't have Rage End. And Vlad is in there too. And how many times have we seen Vlad by himself, the last man standing, last vampire standing, just completely surrounded, inundated by enemies and going on to carry the day? I've seen it many times before. I was scared at this point. I have the full surround off, but most of my cavalry is severely depleted. It's hurting bad. Very little infantry left, but the saving grace is Steam Tank and Marius Lightdorf are still alive, and Vargolfs don't have the best leadership in the game. And it looks like the Vampire Counts are running out of Winds of Magic too. So, in double fast forward, we're gonna see the Vargolf, one of them, crumble out of existence. Other one, its attack animations can carry it outside of the safety of the box sometimes. And in that case, let him get a little bit attacked in the unprotected flank. The other gorilla decides to crumble, and then Vlad is left alone. At that point, it's army losses. Fast forward at the end there, just because that kind of grinding fight isn't necessarily the most thing, fun thing to watch. But, yeah, I mean, Vlad and the Vargolfs almost made their last stand there. They almost won it. Terror routed a few of my Pestileers there in the late stages of that battle, but had enough with Marius Lightdorf and the Heavy Cav to carry the day. And that was an interesting one. I loved Alathor's build. Quintessential vampire counts right there. You get a really powerful HQ in the center, the Vargulfs and Vlad working in tandem, causing all kinds of havoc, mayhem, and carnage wherever they go. You go for a huge horde of just crap tier infantry that's only job is to absorb shots and absorb focus from the enemy while your high value stuff does its work, and then some White King cavalry as well. And the Whites, the Black Knights, that cavalry attack was probably what sealed the loss for the Vampire Counts in this particular matchup. Got a little bit too blobbed up there. It's a little bit weird going from vanilla to SFO because in vanilla, vortexes can be good, but they're never going to delete an entire cav blob completely by themselves, generally speaking, unless you're like super blobbed up there. He wasn't incredibly blobbed, but he had a couple cav units on top of each other, and what that meant was Chain Lightning goes down and all that cav disappeared. And if he had a few more cav units there in the late stages of the battle to kind of overlap charges when the demigriffs and other stuff went in, could have been in much better shape to take that game. 
ended up being really close anyway, but I mean, Blood Dragon Warriors, 236 kills is no joke. And for the Outriders, Grenade Launchers, 328, Steam Tank, 300, Marius Lightdorf, Mad Count takes the win for Averland.